Hey there, Flobo Boys with that hashtag wrestling. And well, I'm being joined by a man that's fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, a multiple time champion and one of the voices of Impact Wrestling and this host, favorite professional wrestler of all time, Kilo Brown. How you doing, sir? I'm good, my dog. How you feeling today? Man, it's good, man. It's not every day you get to meet your heroes and you seem to be a cool dude. <laughs> uh, you know, I try to be. I try to be. <laughs> well, let's get right into the brass tacks. This weekend, Impact AEW in the in the wings, you know, hanging out, rebellion, forbidden doors are closed, crossovers are happening. I mean, what's the feeling on, on the impact side of things? On the impact side, it's like excitement. Um, we're going into a weekend that, you know, hasn't happened in wrestling in, in 40 or 50 years. So, you know, when when you get two companies who are putting their titles in line, winner take all, this is this is crazy talk. Like, I can't believe we're about to see this happen let alone it's real i can't believe this it feels like an avengers movie doesn't it like i've never thought in a million years that would happen but title for title is your main event rich swan kenny omega i mean two of our if not if not necessarily underrated but like definitely the top tier talents on both companies and uh i don't want to put you against the wall there but you got a prediction early prediction i, I gotta i gotta i gotta wave the flag of impact i mean i i go with the the heart and desire of Rich Swan. The man's been through so much in his life. I don't think this 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 level of, of pressure is is anything to him. And I think he's gonna rise to the occasion and and knock on wood, I hope Rich Swan comes out as the world champ. Um yeah. that, that's my hope and my my goal. I think it'd be incredible for him to be, you know, be a dual world champion. I think it'd be awesome for his career. It's funny because like Rich Swan in a lot of ways is like impact, you know, being out there grinding for years, putting in the hard work, sometimes being mm -hmm. overlooked, being told they do not belong. But here's a chance on the biggest stage, and I've seen in the recent times, uh, to see what would happen. And if they became a double champion, if Rich did, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, but the news coming out this week that Mauro Ronaldo will be calling the action there. I mean, Mauro is an experience and a half. Just walk me through your your thoughts about this idea. I'm completely excited. I mean, Marl is, is one of the strongest and most known voices in all of combat sports. And to have him on this night with all the eyes of wrestling on us and have him sitting there next to him at the at the desk at calling this this match, this show, yeah. I mean, I'm so excited. I, I put a tweet out earlier. I, I'm eager to sit under the learning tree. I want to, <laughs> to steal as much <laughs> from him as I can and deep dive into his head and pick his brain um, because I think it'll, it'll serve me well going forward just to be in the presence of someone who's, who's as, as accomplished as he is. Yeah, I can imagine like hanging out backstage like, yo, play, you free right now? Let's talk about these notes. <laughs> bro, bro, I'm, he's going to be tired of seeing me like, hey, bro, let's, let's talk about this main event again. He'll go, we did it 10 times. 11 can't hurt. Yeah, 11 you know? can't hurt. But that's how you learn, right? Hurt. Oh, oh my, because, you know, there's one thing about Mauro Ronaldo, there is a whole discussion about wrestling as a co sport to commentate and how mm -hmm. it's unique, it has its own intricacies, but, like, Mauro transitioned so smooth, it became the voice of so many brands, man. Like, mm -hmm. I, I wish I could commentate as well uh, with him. Uh, but let's talk about your journey, uh, shifting to the commentary booth. I mean, what were you, was, did you get the call one day we were working on something else? Was that something that was on your vision board? Like, how did that come about? It's just one of those things that, that you said are circumstances. You know, there was a promotion there with Josh Matthews and, and the desk became open and Aaron Impact was looking to freshen things up. So, you know, I got the call from Scott Demore and, you know, he told me, hey, what would you think about being the color commentator? You know, you know, here it is. And yeah. and I I literally took a, bre a breath. I was how honored I was and I was like, you know, challenge accepted. Let's go do this. Let's go see if I can uh, – Get out there on 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 this type of stage and 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 do well, excel, try to try to show the world that here's another you know another side of me that um, can be out there. So um, I, I love it. I love what's going on. I think it's it's amazing, and I enjoy. I think I have the best seat in the house. I enjoy every time I'm out there calling matches. It's it's easy to talk about the thing you love most in the world it's easy to tell everybody what you think of it. So that's yeah. me. Just know when I'm talking about wrestling, it's, it's I'm talking about my love affair with wrestling. I just imagine like Scott with like the roll pieces of paper and the headset, like, Taylor, you're free. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, I'm in. I'll, I'll show up. Don't worry about it. I got you. It's, it's something like that. It was something like that. <laughs> 
Yeah, did you? Did, I know you're more on the color side, but did you like have a preference though? Did you want to learn to do play by play? Do you want to be a hybrid? Like, what what is like the, the directory for that for you? I like color right now. I like I like adding those those insights and and adding you know that little bit of knowledge I have from you know the history and backstory of wrestling. But you know, if if ever the challenge were to come up to do play by play, you know what? We'll, we'll give it a go. I may not yes. be good at it, but we'll give it a go. I mean, the more hats the more hats you put on, the better life is, right? Right, exactly. That's what. That's why you're the real though, man. That's the idea. That's the day what. <laughs> Let's talk about the rest of this card, not just the main event. I mean, this one here is pretty stacked. Um, and one of the matches that I was most looking forward to is that last man standing competition. Train Miguel, yeah. uh, which has come into his own over the past year, if I can say so myself. Sammy Callahan, a veteran, uh, if there ever was one. Just your thoughts about that match in particular, because I know this can go a billion and one ways. You got two guys who go back a long way. Um, they don't like each other, and Sammy is trying to prove something to Trey, and Trey is trying to prove something to the entire world. Um, yeah. Trey has come back with this new attitude, this new fire in, in his, you know, you can see it on his face. There's this new fire inside him, and and it seems like, you know, Sammy is trying to squash that fire out, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Trey Miguel, and I, I think this match is going to be hard-hitting, and boy... <laughs> uh, I just I'm believing that it's gonna be hard hitting. Yeah. Do, do you like as a performing yourself? Like, do you know sometimes you get like paired up or you have a match on the horizon? You're like, okay, I'm gonna make sure I have a massage appointment the next day. <laughs> they gonna be hurting pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you know those matches where you're like, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna leave it all in the ring. So I mean, you know, and and when it's you put a you put the lights this bright on an event. Yeah, I'm not as a performer as as a commentator. I'm not just going to be part of the show. I'm going to own my moments in the show. So I think every competitor is going in with that with that mindset. Like, no matter what, yeah, let's get our massage ready. Yeah, let's go get our our, our heat treatment ready because <laughs> when we're done, we're yeah. gonna need it. But we're gonna go out there and we're gonna lay it all on the line out there and and make everyone talk about our match as well as everything else. I got a feeling that Trey is going to make Sam regret saying he has no passion, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the women's division, the knockout division, excuse me. Oh. Uh, with Diana, Diana Perrazzo, Tina Dashwood. Now, a lot's been said about the evolution of, of women in the sport, which I've seen to love the growth of it. it besides mm -hmm. the fact of being inspiring, it's almost uh, kind of like a cool thing now. To tell you how, look, you have watched the growth of women's professional wrestling. Impact is no different. The Knockouts Division has been a leading uh, in that segment for a long time. But right now, I think it's at a fever pitch. Yeah, I mean, the Knockouts Division um, started this whole women's revolution. You can look back to the history of Impact and see that, you know, Impact was, was putting young ladies in main events long before that was acceptable, long before that was common practice. We were doing it. Uh, and yeah. because of that, these young ladies have flourished and have found their voice and have found a place in wrestling, I think it's amazing. And then when you can just when you can just say, I'm looking forward to this wrestling match between two women and not just call it a, a woman's match or a knockout match, but I'm looking forward to this wrestling match. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I can say personally, um, I, I love Deanna Perrazzo's work. I think what she does is old school, yet it's got a new school twist on it where she loves dissecting a body part and she knows... 85 different ways to go into the arm bar. And I think that's exciting. And then Tennille, don't, don't be fooled by Tennille's cover. That book is, is a little deeper than you think. And, and she can actually wrestle too. Just because she's jet setting around the world doesn't mean that woman doesn't put her time into training. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to this match because I think it's, it's two women who, who have something to prove to the world. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head about Deanna's work. Uh, she's a lot more technical, uh, which is great. As a commentator, is it a challenge to underscore the importance of technical wrestling to a newer audience, or is that just something that you just make sure it's like part of the, the total package? You make sure it's part of the total package. You make sure yeah. people understand what they're seeing is is something impressive, and, and it takes a long time. It's a skill you learn. It's not something that you get overnight, and it's no different than – you know, Deanna floating 15 points of arm bar than watching Tom Brady throw a, a, a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. It's a skill you have to learn. Um, yeah. And it takes someone to perfect it. Not everybody can do it. So um, it's a joy to go out there and, and call matches like that. 
uh, about 10 years ago because i'm old now <laughs> 10 years ago i used to work with uh with david marquez at a championship wrestling hollywood back when it was in hollywood uh, as a commentator and it was almost like this analogy that like technical wrestling is kind of like dark chocolate like once you acquire a taste for it, you appreciate mm -hmm. it a lot more. But when, yes. you, when you were first into the, the sport, it's kind of like a hard to say, no, there's a reason why Dean Malenko is doing this to someone's neck. <laughs> like, no, there's yeah. a reason why. So like the fact you get to be able to educate the masses is always a cool time. <laughs> I have fun when I'm, I'm explaining why the neck is being twisted one way, what that does to the body. I, I love explaining that little, those little nuances because people see things, they don't realize what it feels like or, or what it's actually doing sometimes. So it's nice to, to put it out there and, and say, this is the reason why they're doing this. This is why they're wearing them down. This is how you build, build, build to winning a match. So it's enjoyable to to lay that 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 foundation, that groundwork out. So it gives people a deeper insight into wrestling. Uh, so are you and Striker the highest IQ commentary team in wrestling? Uh, I don't. I you know Striker is. I I, I take a far distant second to him. Like he, he, because the average two of us together, and he's got us both covered. Yeah, well, how is it working with Striker? This is guy's traveled the world, did so many different expressions with his work. It's amazing. I mean, he's a wordsmith, and I do my best to keep up with him. Um, he, he is he is just he's insightful, intelligent, and he's a joy to be around. And the cool thing about it is, um, he and I are friends off camera, so that makes life on camera that much easier. When yeah. you're sitting next to somebody who also loves what we're doing. Um, I tell everybody the easiest thing to talk about is something you're in love with. That's the yes. easiest thing to talk about. So Absolutely. that's just the two of us are talking about our love of wrestling. That's it. That's that's what we're out there doing. <laughs> you know, we touched on some of the matches on the event, uh, Rebellion this weekend. Was there any other matches right there that was sticking out to you when you're look, looking forward to call? Uh, that, that's easy. I'm looking forward to the X Division three way. Um, mm. I, I love any combination of these guys, let alone all three of them together. Uh, and I've said it on other interviews, and I'll say it here. I think this match has the potential to turn Rebellion on its ear and steal the show. Like, I think that match could be that good. It's just so funny to me. The exhibition is just so consistent at doing that. <laughs> like, yes, like this, yes, yes, you get, yes. The exactly the, the hit percentage is so high <laughs> when it comes yeah. to that sort of thing. Yeah, like uh, the X Division is hitting for power, hitting for average. Uh, there, there. I mean, the X Division has been, you know, it has been the, the keystone to this company since its inception. It is what's the company is has really thrown out to the world, and and no matter who's been in the X Division, no matter who's represented it, they've represented us, the division, and wrestling very, very well. <laughs> yeah, uh, we touched upon AEW being a part of the main event there, but I gotta ask the the question that everyone's been asking because I'm, I'm I'm that kind of journalist. That's the kind of I do. I did my research, mm -hmm. but is it going to happen sooner or later that we're gonna pile the boys into a van and head over to Jacksonville? Do we gonna see Impact just invade Dynamite? We just the whole world's watching, the whole world's waiting, Dilo. Dude, I, I you know. I, I'm 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 been known to be part of invasions before, so I, I know what it's like. Um, so uh, I would love to to get the, the in bag jet and fly us down to Jacksonville and 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 see our boys walk through the gates and you know be the enemies, knock at the gates, and let's go, let's go, let's go, because you yeah. know gang warfare is something I know pretty uh, you know I know a lot about. So uh, <laughs> I can definitely help produce that stuff. So let's go. I love it. I love it. Um, well, thank you so much for being on the show. Before I let you go, though, I have, I have one question and one more story to say. My story is this. Growing up as a kid, as a man that wore a T-shirt to the pool till I was 31 years old, it was cool to see a chest protector on TV. It made my life that much easier. You, sir, are a legend and an inspiration. <laughs> But my last question for you is this. You've done it all, man. You traveled the world. You, you traveled Europe week to week. You had done things and so many. I mean, you actually were in a biker game, kind of, it's kind of, sort of. What is left for D'Lo Brown? I mean, you produce, I mean, you've done everything, bro. The, more books? Like, I like that talk show? Juggling? You know, like, <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know what? I'll think of something. There's always going to be a next step. <laughs> I can't sit still, man. Like, I, I, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. And, and, there's always a challenge around the corner. So, I mean, life has been that way since day one. It's, ne I've never seen a challenge I was gonna shy from and and and, and I was always gonna keep looking for new challenges. So there's gonna be something. Um, you don't know if it's a book or a talk show or 
heck, a stand-up show in Vegas here. Um, who knows? Uh, it's just I'm always looking for something, but it'll always be wrestling centric. Trust me on that. Yeah, I do stand up. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> D Lo and Flobo, we're going on tour. That's, that's... Let's go do it. <laughs> Impact Rebellion, April 25th. This weekend is going to change the landscape of wrestling. This is Global Boys with that hashtag show. And this has been D'Lo Brown. If you have follow him already on social media, do so. And D'Lo, how can they follow you on, online? How can they follow you on social media? I'm, uh, I'm on Twitter at, at D'Lo Brown 75. I will talk Impact. I'll talk Liverpool football. I'll talk Chicago Bears football. I will show you what I'm going to cook for dinner tomorrow night because that's just how I am. But I'm interactive. Um, Hit me up and we will chat. Trust me. So, are you a Super League, Pro Super League, or, po or Con Super League? Opposed to the Super League. I think it's a money grab and it just will rip apart the heart of uh, and the fabric of domestic leagues. Well, I, I support Man City, so I'm all about money grabs. Uh, <laughs> well, Man, City, Man City's been money grabbing for. <laughs> Blue on, Moon! He's <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.